As I stood there, knife in hand, ready to cut my birthday cake, the joy of the moment shattered instantly. My husband Michael suddenly shouted, Stop this nonsense! Before I could react, he slapped me hard across the face. The shock left me speechless. Then, in a fit of rage, he grabbed my arms and threw me to the ground. I felt the cold floor beneath me, and in that moment, everything I believed about love crumbled. Lying there, humiliated and broken, I realized I was no longer just a victim of his anger. I was a woman determined to reclaim my life from the clutches of abuse. My name is Emily, and I'm 30 years old. I live in Chicago, Illinois, and I work as a marketing manager for a tech company that my father built from the ground up. This company, worth $150 million, is more than just a business. It's my father's legacy, one I've carried forward after his unexpected passing. As I sit here reflecting on my life, I can't help but think about how everything changed during my 30th birthday, a celebration that should have been filled with joy, laughter, and love, but turned into a nightmare that shattered my world. The excitement for my birthday had been building for weeks. I meticulously planned every detail, hoping to honor my father's memory while celebrating another year of life. I envisioned a gathering filled with warmth, laughter, and the people I loved most. However, Michael had been acting distant for months. We had been married for five years, but recently he seemed lost in his thoughts, spending more time at work and less time with me. Whenever I tried to talk to him about it, he dismissed my concerns, claiming he was stressed. Deep down, I sensed something wasn't right, but I ignored those feelings, hoping it was just a phase. On the day of my party, I was a bundle of nerves, ensuring everything was perfect. Friends and family began arriving, and the house buzzed with excitement. My best friend, Jessica, was the first to walk through the door. Wow, Emily, everything looks stunning, she exclaimed, her eyes lighting up as she admired the decorations. Thanks, Jess. I just hope Michael likes it, I replied, glancing around for him. Despite my excitement, I couldn't shake the feeling he was unhappy. Don't worry about him. Let's just have fun tonight, Jessica encouraged, pulling me into the living room where guests mingled and chatted. As the party progressed, I couldn't ignore how Michael spent most of his time with his mother, Helen. Helen was always critical of me, and tonight was no exception. Emily, dear, she said, approaching me with her usual scrutinizing gaze. The decorations are lovely, but don't you think the colors clash a bit? A more sophisticated touch would have been better. I forced a smile, feeling the familiar sting of her words. Thanks for the feedback, Helen. I thought they added a cheerful vibe. Helen gave a tight-lipped smile and walked away, leaving me feeling deflated. I caught Michael laughing with his sister, Lisa, but he barely acknowledged me. The warmth and affection we once shared seemed like a distant memory. When it was finally time to cut the cake, I felt a surge of excitement. This was my moment, a time to celebrate with everyone I loved. I stood at the head of the table, knife in hand, surrounded by friends and family ready to cheer me on. But just as I was about to make the first cut, Michael stood up abruptly. Emily, stop this nonsense, he shouted, his voice harsh. I froze, the knife hovering above the cake as my heart raced. The room fell silent, and all eyes were on us. What are you talking about? I stammered, confused. You need to transfer the house and the company to my name, he demanded, his expression a mixture of anger and entitlement. You don't need them. You've never understood their true value. My mind raced. As I processed his words, I was in disbelief. What? You can't be serious. This company is worth $150 million. It was my father's legacy. Exactly, he shouted back, and it's time you realized you have no idea how to run it. I'm doing this for us, so we can finally be free from the past. My heart sank as the reality of his demands settled in. He wasn't just trying to control my life. 
He was attempting to take everything my father had worked for. I'm not transferring anything. I said firmly, this is mine and I will not let you take it from me. The tension in the room escalated and before I could react, Michael slapped me hard across the face. The sound echoed in the stunned silence. I stumbled back, my hand flying to my cheek, feeling humiliated and betrayed. In a fit of rage, she grabbed me and threw me to the ground. My heart raced with fear and confusion as I felt the cold, hard floor beneath me. I could feel the eyes of our friends on me, their expressions filled with shock and horror. Helen, standing beside her son, merely nodded in approval, leaving me utterly devastated. Get out of my life, Emily. I don't love you anymore. I'm going to marry someone who understands business, he yelled, his words cutting deeper than the slap itself. Tears streamed down my face as I fled upstairs, the walls closing in around me. I collapsed onto my bed, sobbing uncontrollably, unable to breathe from the weight of his betrayal. Moments later, there was a soft knock on the door. Emily, it's me, Jessica, she said gently, opening the door and rushing to my side. Oh my God, are you okay? I can't believe he did that. I don't know what happened, Jess, I sobbed, feeling the crushing weight of everything. I thought we were happy. I thought he loved me. Listen to me, Emily. This isn't okay, she said firmly, pulling back to look me in the eyes. You need to leave him. He's been controlling you for a long time now. This isn't just a one-time thing. As I processed her words, I began to realize I had been ignoring the signs for far too long. I thought of all the moments when Michael's jokes had cut too deep, when he dismissed my feelings, and how I always felt like I was walking on eggshells around him. I can't just leave, I whispered, shaking my head. He's my husband. I love him. But does he love you? Jessica asked softly. You deserve so much better than this. Sitting in the darkness of my bedroom, I felt a flicker of something new, anger. I had been a victim for too long, and maybe it was time to reclaim my life. As I stared at my reflection in the mirror, I saw a woman who was tired of being treated like a doormat. I'm going to figure this out, I whispered, determination rising within me. I had to start planning my next move, and I knew it wouldn't be easy. I wiped away my tears and began gathering my thoughts. A plan began to form in my mind. I wouldn't let Michael or Helen control my future any longer. I was ready to fight back, to expose the truth, and to reclaim my power. Little did I know this was just the beginning of a journey that would lead me to self-discovery and empowerment. In the days following that disastrous birthday party, my mind was a whirlwind of emotions. I was devastated, angry, and above all, determined. Michael's words echoed in my head. I don't love you anymore. I'm going to marry someone who understands business. Those words felt like a dagger to my heart, but they also ignited a fire within me. I realized I had been living in denial, blinded by love, and it was time to face the harsh reality. Are you okay, Emily? Jessica asked when she came over a few days later. We sat in my living room, the remnants of the party still scattered around. I had tried to clean up, but the decorations felt like painful reminders of what had happened. I don't know, Jess, I admitted, feeling the weight of my situation. I keep replaying everything in my mind. I thought we had a good marriage. Sometimes the signs are there, but we choose to ignore them, she said gently. You need to figure out what you really want. I want my life back, I said, my voice steady. I want to expose him for who he truly is, I said with determination. That's the spirit, Jessica encouraged. But first, we need to gather some evidence. You can't just confront him without a plan. Over the next few days, I started paying closer attention to everything Michael did. I noticed his strange behavior, late night phone calls and his habit of keeping his phone face down on the table. These small signs had been there all along, but I had ignored them, hoping for the best. One night, I decided to stay up late and wait for him to come home from work. My heart raced as I heard the familiar sound of his key turning in the lock. 
Hey, Emily, you're still awake, he said, stepping into the living room, his expression unreadable. Yeah, just couldn't sleep, I replied, forcing a smile. How was your day? It was fine, he said, avoiding my gaze as he took off his shoes. I watched him closely, trying to gauge his mood, but the tension in the air was palpable. Michael, can we talk about what happened at the party? I asked, my heart pounding in my chest. Do we have to? I thought we were past that, he replied dismissively, heading toward the kitchen. Past what? I pressed. You slapped me in front of our friends. That's not something we can just forget. He turned to face me, irritation flashing in his eyes. You know how my mother can be. You should have listened to her. Listen to her? You were the one who humiliated me. I shot back, feeling a surge of defiance. I can't believe you would side with her after that. Maybe you should take a look at yourself first, he snapped, storming off into the kitchen. I felt my heart sink. This conversation wasn't going anywhere, and I was running out of patience. As the days turned into weeks, I continued my investigation, determined to uncover the truth. With Jessica's help, I discovered that Michael had been spending far more time with his assistant, Maya, than I had realized. They would meet for coffee or dinner, and the more I learned, the clearer the picture became. One evening, while scrolling through social media, I came across a picture of Michael and Maya laughing together at a restaurant. The caption read, asterisk date night, with my favorite person hashtag blessed, asterisk my blood ran cold. They were having an affair, and I had been blind to it. Jess, look at this, I said, showing her the picture. Her eyes widened, and she quickly took a deep breath. This confirms what we suspected. He's definitely cheating on you, she said, anger flashing in her eyes. You need to confront him. I will, I replied, my voice firm. But first, I need to gather more evidence. I can't let him twist the story around. With renewed determination, I decided to set up a meeting with a lawyer. I needed to understand my options and prepare for the battle ahead. After researching local attorneys, I found one with a strong reputation for handling cases like mine. During the consultation, I explained everything to Rachel, the lawyer. I suspect my husband is cheating on me and planning to take control of my finances. I told her, my heart racing as I laid it all out. Rachel listened carefully, nodding as she took notes. Gathering evidence will be crucial for any legal action, she said. Document everything you can, dates, conversations, any financial discrepancies. This way you'll be prepared to protect yourself. Feeling empowered, I returned home and began organizing everything I had learned. I collected text messages, emails, and notes from conversations that had raised red flags. The puzzle pieces were coming together, and I could feel my strength building. One evening, as I sat at the kitchen table, Going through my notes, Michael walked in. He looked surprised to see me still awake. Working late, huh? He said, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Just going over some things, I reply, keeping my tone neutral. What things? He asked, stepping closer. Just a personal project, I said, deflecting his attention. He narrowed his eyes at me. You've been acting strange lately. Is there something you want to tell me? His voice had a sharp edge, as if he suspected something. No, nothing at all, I replied, forcing a smile, just enjoying some peace and quiet after the party. Michael didn't push the conversation further, but his eyes lingered on me as if he was trying to read my mind. I stayed calm, but inside I felt my nerves fraying. The tension between us had reached a boiling point, and it was only a matter of time before everything came crashing down. In the following days, I meticulously gathered more evidence of Michael's betrayal and deceit. I delved into our business accounts, and with Rachel's guidance, I uncovered a shocking truth. Michael had been diverting funds from my company into a separate account for months. The realization left me feeling sick to my stomach, but it also fueled my determination. This wasn't just about infidelity anymore, 
It was financial abuse, and I wasn't going to let him get away with it. The turning point came when I received a call from Rachel. Emily, we've gathered enough evidence to proceed with filing for divorce and exposing Michael's embezzlement. Are you ready for this? Yes, I replied, my voice steady and unwavering. I'm ready. With a plan in place, I decided to confront Michael in a controlled setting. I invited him to meet me at the house, telling him we needed to talk things through. It would be the perfect moment to reveal everything I had discovered and put an end to his manipulative game. When Michael arrived, he seemed caught off guard to find me sitting at the dining table with a stack of documents laid out in front of me. His expression shifted from confusion to suspicion as he approached. What's all this? he asked, furrowing his brow. I wanted to show you something important, I said, my heart pounding. I've gathered evidence of your deceit and financial crimes. You can't hide from this anymore, Michael. His face paled. What are you talking about? He stammered, his eyes darting to the papers in front of me. I have proof of your affair with Maya, and I've uncovered the money you've been siphoning from my company into a separate account, I stated, watching as the color drained from his face. You thought I wouldn't find out, didn't you? He opened his mouth to protest, but I didn't give him the chance. You think you can manipulate me? You're in way over your head, and I won't let you control my life any longer. Michael's anger flared as he realized he had been caught. You don't know what you're talking about, Emily. This is all in your head. You're just being paranoid. His voice grew louder, but the desperation was clear. Paranoid? I echoed, incredulous. I have proof, Michael. You've been stealing from me and you've betrayed everything we once had. He lunged toward me, but I stood my ground. For the first time in a long time, I wasn't afraid. You won't intimidate me anymore, I said, my voice steady and full of conviction. At that moment, there was a knock at the door. It was Rachel, accompanied by a couple of police officers. Michael Thompson, you are under arrest for embezzlement and domestic abuse, one of the officers announced as they stepped inside. Michael's face turned white as he realized the trap I had set for him. You can't do this, he shouted, but it was too late. The officers moved swiftly, handcuffing him as I watched, feeling a sense of relief wash over me. For the first time, I was no longer the victim. I was reclaiming my life. As they took him away, I stood in disbelief. I had done it. I had stood up for myself, exposed the truth, and found my strength. The darkness that had overshadowed my life for so long was finally lifting. In the weeks that followed, I focused on rebuilding my life. I poured my energy into the company, determined to honor my father's memory and make the business even more successful. With Rachel's help, I ensured the company remained in my control as Michael faced the full legal consequences of his actions. One evening, as I worked late in my office, I paused to reflect on everything that had happened. I realized I had come full circle. I had faced my demons and emerged stronger than ever before. The road had been long and difficult, but I had found my voice and reclaimed my power. As I looked out the window at the setting sun, I felt a sense of peace. I was ready to write my own story, free from the shadows of the past. The journey of self-discovery had only just begun, and I was excited to see where it would lead me next.